<laughs> you know who I'm digging is that Ron Paul guy. Now, I don't know what Ron Paul looks like. I keep seeing his signs. I didn't know anything about him until a couple of days ago. I'm watching, was I, watch, I was watching something on Fox News, and they were interviewing Ron Paul. And I sat there, you know, I figured he's just like some kooky, right-wing, you know, Republican. Uh -huh. So I'm listening to the dude, and afterwards, like, Beth is sitting next to me, and I didn't say anything. And then all of a sudden I went, uh, you know, I think I agreed with everything that dude just said. <laughs> and, and then she goes, I did too. I go, I don't know who that guy is. He wants us out of Iraq. Like, I mean, day one. And he's a Republican. Republican. American people with debt. Why are there so few of you? Why is the why is the debate not run by more people like you that are debating trillion dollar issues that we actually have as opposed to this pro wrestling we get? There's nothing wrong with what the founders talked about. They talked about having friendships and trading, getting along with people and staying out of the entangling alliance and the internal affairs of foreign nations when it's none of our business. <laughs> strategy for battling terrorism can't be that you overthrow governments and then make the United States military uh, commit 150,000 troops to those lands until they can somehow stabilize the governments. And why did Fox News not treat Ron Paul better when he's been talking about this stuff for the past eight years? Look, we can you. I think we'd be better off if we had freedom and not government control of our lives, our personal lives. And, our, uh, okay. and, and policing the world. And we're on the verge of runaway inflation because there's too much acceptance of big government. Have we brought any troops home? Are we less involved in Iraq? Will that war ever end? Or are we really going in the opposite direction? I think we should be talking with people and they said, no, you're enemies, yeah. Like I'd be trading with Cuba. Everybody else wants to trade with Cuba. Why shouldn't we have open trade? I always think that people who aren't willing to talk are insecure. We lack confidence that we can't talk to people. And we are strong enough. Nobody's gonna attack us militarily. At the risk of uh, going over our time, I just wanna say having campaigned during the last presidential election, you had the most enthusiastic supporters of anybody I ever saw. I love to hear that. Your message obviously resonated with a lot of people. Thank you. You're going to encourage him. <laughs> <laughs> Are we ready for Ron Paul? Are we ready to kick off this revolution? Let's hear Ron Paul. Ron. Oh, rah, oh, rah, oh. I look at the Republican field, I see, you know, Palin, Bachman, Pawlenty, uh, Mitt Romney, uh, Donald Trump, I think, is going to is talking about it. Some interesting people, some smart people in that mix. There's no way any of them are better than you for the Republican nomination. Let's just be <laughs> seriously. No, I mean, and when you look at the, your articulation of the actual, I'm not saying your answers are all right. I don't know whether your answers are all right or not. But I do know the way that you frame the debate around the issues that this country faces is the most honest of m almost any politician that I deal with. Do, do you not have an obligation at this point to run for president? Run, 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 run. We're back. Libertarian Congressman Ron Paul of Texas has spent decades espousing his views, and once again, he'll do so on the national stage. This morning, today, he announced he's running for president for the third time. He joins us now from New Hampshire. Welcome, Congressman. 
Thank you, Chris. Well, Ronald Reagan ran three times. Maybe this will be the one for you. But Once again this year, Republican Congressman Ron Paul of Texas won the CPAC presidential straw poll. And once again this year, Mr. Paul delivered a stirring, rousing, optimistic message about liberty. The simple question is, can Barack Obama be defeated? Over the first uh, two years of my presidency, we had a complete disaster. I mean, if you look at Obama's voting record, I mean, he has voted to, you know, not to end the war. He has voted to finance the war. He wants to send more troops in Afghanistan. He wants to broaden the military. His biggest vulnerability will be the economy and high prices. He hasn't dealt with that because he doesn't understand the business cycle. My theory is that people vote from their bellies because it's whether they're hungry or not or have jobs and need things. No way, but they won't laugh as much as they did last time. They won't. <laughs> last time they'd laugh and they'd scorn my foreign policy and they'd laugh at my, at my monetary policy. They won't laugh any longer. And we're in big trouble. Prices are going up. Unemployment is continuing to go up. And we have not had the necessary correction for the financial bubble created by our Federal Reserve System. And until you allow the correction and the liquidation of debt, you can't have growth. Mr. K. Who's the leading candidate for the Republicans for 2012? Um, I don't know. Has the New York Times picked him for us yet? I don't know. I, I keep hearing... the last one. Yeah, I don't know. No, I didn't see the Times No thoughts? Today. No thoughts? Um, I think Ron Paul. Just remember, the uh, Soviet system did not collapse because we had to fight them. They collapsed for economic reasons. So it makes no sense for us to think that we can keep troops in 135 countries, 900 bases, and think we can do it forever. On these kind of issues, spending and debt, uh, are, are you different than the rest of the field? A lot of people who watched me four years ago said, well, it sounded good what you were saying, so I went and checked your record, and it said, their eyes would get open and say, you actually voted that and way. You don't see anybody else who has that kind of a record right now. I like mandates. Uh, the, man, the mandates good, good, good. work. Mandates I beg your pardon? Here we, <laughs> let me, I let me, know you were going to admit that. Oh, absolutely. You like mandates. Let me tell you what kind of mandates I like, Fred, <clears throat> which is this. If the ones you come up with. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's there, there's something that uh, has to do with credibility, and they know that I am, I'm leveling with them, and I've done it all along, and I've expressed these concerns for 20, 30 years. Let me ask you about a couple. He's being treated differently, and frankly, by me as well as a lot of other people this time. I think he was seen as kind of a fringe candidate four years ago, but he's a real player in the GOP race this time. He hasn't changed his views, but the Republican Party has with the role of the Tea Party. Uh, and obviously, Ron Paul, very tough on government spending, wants to dramatically slash the size and scope of the government, uh, constitutional principles. Uh, so, you know, he's a real player in, the, in this race now. I say this with amazement, but it's, it's becoming more and more clear that we live in the age of Ron Paul, Judge. I mean, you stop and think about it. Who's the father of the Tea Party? It's Ron Paul. I mean, Ron Paul's the guy who began the conversation about debt, deficit, high taxes, government intrusion. I have proposals that are different. Uh, as much as I'm opposed to all the spending, I'd cut across right. the board, I have to. But I said, if, you're, if you want to do it in a, on purposely and uh, in, in deliberate fashion, have priorities. And my priority is you cut off all foreign welfare and foreign militarism and corporate welfare before you go after child health care. Right. Who would bring home troops from Afghanistan, Libya, and, 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 and Pakistan? Yeah, all of them. because I believe in strong national defense, and I think that hurts our defense. But you have Afghanistan, Pakistan, Libya. Uh, it looks to me like most of the others are taking the John McCain line as opposed to the Ron Paul. Yeah. And I'll win this argument, not because they'll listen to some really great speech of mine, but we'll run out of money. That's how all great nations and empires end. They can't afford it any longer, and that is what's happening right now. Right, and right now the key inside the Republican Party is who can raise money. And right now, Ron Paul just exploded what he calls his money bomb, $1 million at the end of last week. It's amazing because, believe it or not, I still think of myself as a country doctor that has gone to Congress, and I'm a quiet little congressman from Texas. You have a great following out there. Good luck in the campaigning for and president. It's growing. You're today. I know it's growing, and you may well win this thing. Just remember, Ron. And believe me, the brush fires are burning.